Hi there, this is Nuclear Physics Lesson 3, and this one is Inverse Square Law. So the Inverse Square Law is where radiation spreads out evenly from a source, and as we move further away, a detector would receive less, less and less radiation, as hopefully you can see from this diagram. So we've got some examples, so you might get an intensity, which we just called I, at a distance R. If we double the distance, we get a quarter of the intensity. If we triple the distance, we get a ninth. It falls off you know, inverse square law, 1 over r squared. Yeah. And because it's a sphere, the surface area of a sphere, if we're looking at you know, a little piece of area, at the surface of this sphere, we have to use, we have to divide by 4 pi r squared. The area of a sphere is obviously 4 pi r squared. So we'll be using that one in the next example question which I'm going to show you. So let's do this question together. Unless you want to have a go, then you please pause and try and figure it out. But it's, it's designed to be an example question. When potassium-42 decays, it emits beta particles and gamma rays. One freshly prepared source has an activity of 2.8 times 10 to the 7 becquerel, or decays per second, or counts per second. To determine the dose received by a scientist working with the source, the number of gamma-ray photons incident on each centimetre squared of the body has to be known. One in every five of the decaying nuclei produces a gamma-ray photon. A scientist is initially working 1.6 metres from the fresh source with no shielding. Calculate the amount of gamma-ray photons incident on each centimetre squared of the body of the scientist. So it sounds pretty complicated, but it's, it's not too bad. So let's have a look at how we do it. So first of all, it's one in five of the de the decaying nuclei produces a gamma ray photon. So we need to do the the radio the initial radioactivity, two point eight times ten to the seven, and divide that by five to give us the number of gamma ray photons. So that is five point six times ten to the six. There, Carol. If you could hear barking then, be rest assured it wasn't me, it was some some random dog outside. But anyway, so we need to take this activity and divide it by the the surface area of the sphere that you know because it would, it would emanate out from a single point, and we need a certain section of that sphere. So we're going to divide that activity by four pi r squared. And because the answer is wanted in centimeters squared, we're going to put the 1.6 meters into centimeters. So we're going to divide by four pi times. 160 squared and that will give us the activity per centimeter squared so that would be 17.4 decays per centimeter squared hopefully that's okay let's try another one it's basically the same question it's just different numbers I want you to have a go at it The practice question. So let's pause and have a go. When potassium 42 decays, it emits beta particles and gamma rays. One freshly prepared source has an activity of 3.2 times 10 to the 7 becquerel. To determine the dose received by scientists working with the source, the number of gamma ray photons in certain each centimetre squared of the body has to be known. One in every four of the decaying nuclei produces a gamma ray photon. A scientist initially working two metres from the fresh source with no shielding. So calculate the amount of gamma ray photons incident on each centimetre squared of the body of the scientist. So we need to do the 3.2 times 10 to the 7. Divided by 4 this time instead of 5. And that gives us 8 times 10 to the 6 becquerel for the activity. And then we just need to do the same again. We need to divide it by the safe save of the sphere. So we need to divide by... So it's 8 times 10 to the 6 divided by 4 pi. And the 2 meters we're going to put into centimeters. So that's 200 squared. And that gives an answer 15.9 gamma photons per centimeter squared. So hopefully that's gone okay. Let's do some more stuff then. Let's move on. So let's do the, the sun example. 
So I'm just going to give you this question and let you have a go at it. So the sun's radiation has an intensity of 1,361 watts per meter square at the Earth's atmosphere. Once it passes through the atmosphere, just out of interest, it goes to around about 1,050 watts per meter square. But obviously that's variable due to weather conditions. But we're going to calculate the power output of the sun at a distance of 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters uh, distance from the Earth to the sun. So to figure this one out, you've probably looked at the intensity and looked at the units watts per meter square. So intensity is watts per meter square, so it must be power divided by area. So if you got that well done, uh, then we just need to simply rearrange to get power. So the power would be the intensity multiplied by the area of the sphere, you know, that comes out uh, from the sun. So you've got the center of the sun and then at some massive distance away. You've got that surface area and we're looking at one little part of it per, per meter square essentially so we've got the intensity multiplied by by the area of that sphere so the intensity is the 1361 1361 multiplied by the area of the sphere so that's going to be four pi times the radius square so the radius is the 1.5 times 10 to the 11 and then we need to square this value and that gives us an absolutely humongous 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. Which if you compare it to something, you know, as straightforward as running a laptop, the laptop might run at 300 watts. It's many, many, many times greater than the amount of energy that the entire earth would use in a single year by a massive amount if you want to google the exact figure you can but but it is you know the amount of energy given off by the sun in one second compared to our usage is just astronomical and it's a very big number that's a lot of zeros anyway let's move on from that so we've got an equation for intensity as a note, first of all, often we don't know the source intensity because the source is, you know, possibly too far away. Or it might be too dangerous to approach. But there's an equation that we use, and it's the intensity is equal to some constant k divided by the distance squared. Now, this could either be an x or a d. It's completely up to you. And as you can see from that, intensity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. And what we can do with this equation is is you know very useful, and I'm going to show you on the on the next example. So intensity could be counts per second, you know counts per second of radiation, or becquerel, or becquerel. Uh, x distance is in is in meters. In k we we won't actually use, but I'll, I'll show you how this works. So if you get that equation down, the units, then we'll have a look at an example. So example question, the detector placed 0.2 meters from a sealed gamma ray source, receives a mean count rate of 3,000 counts per minute. At what distance from the source is the count rate 6,500 counts per minute? The, beam, uh, the, the, beam, the mean background radiation is 50 counts per minute. So obviously the background radiation isn't subject to any inverse square law. So we need to subtract both of the values, the 3,000 and the 6,500, and subtract the 50 counts per minute. So our values that we're working with are actually 2,950 and 6,450. So that's the first thing to do. So what we can do, the equation, the I equals K over X squared. Now for both examples, the, the constant K is, is the same. So we can simply do I X squared equals I X squared. So intensity one, distance one squared is equal to intensity two, distance two squared. Then we just simply need to put the numbers in and rearrange. So intensity one. As long as the, it doesn't matter which one is intensity one or two, as long as you pair up the correct number 
with the correct distance. So we've got the 2950 multiplied by our distance 1 will be the 0 0.2 squared. Intensity 2 is known, it's 6450 multiplied by distance 2 squared, which is what we're trying to find out. So pretty straightforward, we do the 2950 times 0 0.2 squared divided by 6450 and then square root to get the distance. So if you put that in your calculator, square root it, you'll get distance 2, which is equal to 0 0.135 or 0 0.14 meters to two significant figures. So hopefully that example's gone okay. And there's another question which you can do. If you want to redo that question, um, please feel free to rewind and have a go at it. So there's a practice question. A detector placed 0 0.3 meters from a sealed gamma ray source receives a mean count rate of 4,500 counts per minute. Calculate the count rate at a distance of 0 0.5 meters from the source. The mean background radiation is 60 counts per minute. So we obviously need to take that into account. So we've got the 4,500 counts per minute. We need to subtract 60 from that to give 4,440. Try to write that down, 4,440. And we're going to use that in our calculation. So get, yet again, we've got intensity one, distance one squared equals intensity two, distance two squared. So intensity one is 4,440 counts. Multiplied by the distance, the distance is the 0 0.3 meters, so 0 0.3 squared equals intensity two this term, multiplied by the distance of 0 0.5 meters, which we need to square. So it's simply 4,440 times 0 0.3 squared divided by the 0 0.5 squared, which gives us a count of 1,598 counts per minute. Now, if you've got that, that's, that's really good. However, you have to add on the mean background radiation. So we need to add the 60 counts because this is what the actual count would be. So the total count is 1658. So 1658 counts per minute. Hopefully you got that. Hopefully that technique's okay. It's pretty straightforward once you've been shown how. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you at the next one.